All right. Good morning. Buenos dias. Thank you for being here. And the way I want to begin is I want to begin with a number, a very special number. It's a prime number. And you're probably thinking, Jonathan, why do we care how old you are? Well, I like to think it's, you know, these 37 years I've learned a thing or two because it actually is a long time. It's a long time for something to evolve and change because this is also the age of Postgres. And Postgres started as an academic project at UC Berkeley. And it was, the idea was to implement a paper discussing how to build an object relational database. Say that 10 times fast. But through the years, what happened? Postgres became an open source project. And a bunch of hobbyists who you know, wanted to develop database features started hacking on it, adding features to it. And Postgres started to get adopted and became used more and more to the point where it became a critical open source project. I mean, how many of you are running a Postgres database today? Yeah, quite a few. And it, it's being powered, used in production for all sorts of systems. And you know, it's important that we continue to develop Postgres and help it to grow. And here's where you know, AWS you know, started increasing its contributions. Here's a chart of AWS feature contributions to Postgres over the past three releases including Postgres 16, all the way to the right, which was released just last week, actually a week ago today. So why, why is AWS doing this? Well, we have services that run on top of Postgres. Uh, we have you know, Amazon Aurora and Amazon RDS that you know, we, uh, we give to you know, our customers to use. Even Amazon itself is running services on Postgres. We recognize it's a critical open source project. And because we obsess over customers, we want to improve it. We want to help because it's going to you know, help benefit everyone. So because of this, you know, we, you know, we talk to our customers and we want to understand like, what, you know, what's important to them. Like, where can we help build Postgres to make it work for them, to make it work very well for them? And you know, one feature we looked at in the Postgres 16 release was logical replication. So logical replication is very important for all sorts of applications. It's a way for you to stream changes in real time to downstream systems. So it's used for change data capture, analytics processing, pushing data to the edge. And the thing, you know, when, you're, when you're using logical replication, you know, up until Postgres 16, it needs to come from your primary database. So this is a, da you know, this is a database that you know, in, in production systems can be very busy. It's accepting all of your changes, all of your writes. It's probably getting a lot of your read traffic. And on top of it, if you want to use logical replication, you're streaming all of those changes out of that database. It's a lot of work. So talking to AWS's customers, they wanted a way to be able to stream changes from standbys. Now, they, you know, this is not a new idea, actually. It had existed for you know, over five years. Like there, there had been work starting in 2018 for it, but it was a hard problem. So you know, we, uh, we uh, picked up the work in November uh, 2022 and tried to, you know, tried to advance it. And it did take a lot of effort and iterations with the community. And this is where you know, understanding the history of the community is helpful, because there is a process. It's not just about authoring the code. There's design review. There's code review you know, through the process. There's iterating, testing, making sure it can meet you know, all the different use cases that come up. And we work with all the companies in Postgres you know, you know, to, you know, to you know, help build out this feature. But there's a give and take in Postgres. You need to work with other, you know, other organizations, other individuals to you know, test their patches, review their patches, et cetera. So while we focused on re you know, the logical replication from standby's feature, uh, we collaborated with all these other companies on logical replication features they were interested in. And this is part of about maintaining a healthy, open source, you know, collaborative environment, is that you're all working together towards the common goal. Now, Postgres is, you know, it, you know, Postgres goes beyond just the database, and the community is very sensitive to not having you know, one organization be too influential. But there's ways you can still contribute to Postgres beyond just the core database software. Three examples are here. First, there's extensions. Extensions are, you know, you know, the lifeblood of Postgres in many ways. It's how you can add functionality to Postgres without having to fork the database. There's thousands of these in existence. You know, some of them have you know, communities of their own, you know, PostGIS being a very big example. Yeah. <laughs> there, you know, there's also drivers. And for me, and I started as an app developer, and you know, the driver is the key to connecting to the database. You know, it made it easy for me to write you know, Python apps, Ruby apps, and you know, be able to interface directly with Postgres. And then there's governance, which is something you know, I'm personally very passionate about, because you know, not being a C hacker myself, 
it was a way for me to give back to a, you know, a project that I love so much that I used every day that uh, you know, gave so much back to me, helping with you know, advocacy, legal issues, security, et cetera. And AWS has been involved in this in all aspects. Um, you know, two extensions that come to mind with their own communities, PG Himplan, which uh, helps enable functionality from, that's available in, let's say, commercial databases that's not in Postgres, to emerging workloads like you know, everything with Gen AI and helping to support PG Vector, which brings vector similarity search to Postgres. Uh, we also support the JDBC driver, which is critical for Java applications connecting to Postgres, as well as various governance efforts. So where can we go, where are we going from there? Like there's certainly more we can do, and we're looking to continue investing in extension development because extensions do help bring more workloads to Postgres. Last year we open source trusted language extensions, which provides a way to, to install extensions on systems where you might not have access to the underlying file system, but safely run code written in languages like PL Rust, uh, JavaScript, et cetera. Also helping a project advocacy, helping to promote Postgres, helping to write educational content to show folks how to better use Postgres, and training new contributors. Now, as I mentioned, Postgres has been around for 37 years. We've had a whole generation of developers working on Postgres. That's really exciting, and there's so many lessons in there. Like, I'm grateful to like, all the folks who've like, mentored me throughout the years in the community, and we also need to continue to grow the community to ensure it's sustainable and we can keep Postgres going for you know, at least another 37 years. And this fits within AWS open source mission for sustainable open source. Part of sustainability is ensuring that a project can continue you know, throughout, you know, throughout its uh, lifespan and you know, continue to grow it you know, through the years. So I thank you for your time today, and I will be at the AWS booth at noon and well, pretty much all day. So happy to talk to you more about Postgres and all topics open source. Thank you so much. <laughs>